ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. I'm Karen Maku. And I'm Cody. And last episode, we were freaking out over a knife and a mysterious carriage murder. Shoot, who did we say that we were going to, like, look over? I don't know. Last episode, we got a new piece of evidence, which is a knife. And also, the jury has pretty much fully made its decision. Did we press this one? We pressed everything. No, I don't think we pressed this last one. I guess so. Hmm. You're free to press it. I just don't know. Because, like, we got the knife, so I'm assuming we have to present that. I'm going to press it. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I zoned out. Sorry. What was, I was playing on my DS. <laughs> uh, what exactly did you see? Oh, well, sir, that would be the p passenger, sir. Yes, collapsed on the floor, he was. No, he wasn't. Oh, he wasn't? Yeah, wait, that's an inaccuracy. <laughs> can I can I point it out, like, right now? That you fucked up. Can I put? Can I throw this at him right now? <laughs> can you? No, you can't. I, I can't. Why not? Right now, I'm only allowed to look at these other people. I can't throw evidence at him. But in, in order for me to throw evidence, I would have to ask him to add that to his testimony. Okay. Okay. And by the passenger, obviously you're referring to the victim, Mr. Mason the Brickmaker. No. And and then the other passenger had that knife in his hands. Like this. That's another inaccuracy. Yeah, no, he couldn't have because the... the, the he was... He was stabbed once, and the knife was left in the wound. No, he's implying that he saw the moment before the murder, but he said that he turned around after someone screamed, which means the murder had already happened. Yeah, because Lady screamed when he noticed the murder had a, had occurred. Yeah. You're lying to us, Beppo. Beppo, do you just want to go home? <laughs> I always knew you could never trust a man named Beppo. By the other passenger, obviously you are referring to the accused, Mr. Magnus McGillid. What? <laughs> oh, also, we have like a new like sort of seating situation. Oh yeah, so if it sounds weird, just uh, bear it, with us. It'll probably fix itself. And then he plunged it like this, stabbing the other passenger in the belly. Stop lying, Beppo. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, you're. You're, You're fucking lying. My lord, I wish to speak. Ah, oh, well, we lose. <laughs> I'm drunk. Yes, sir, number five. Do I take it that you too, as the master of the London Guild of Coachmen, the idea of a murder being committed in one of the city's carriages is utterly abhorrent to me. My mustache is shaped like a horseshoe. That was the point, Cody. Wouldn't be right to make a decision before hearing all the facts, though, I said to myself. But I've heard enough now. The horse is bolted, as they say. No, no, please. Just keep it over. Get up now, Silver Blaze. The finish is in sight. It, like, stops and then goes to the innocent last second. <laughs> oh, man, I'm surprised they don't do that. Beppo is a long-standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Also, you you, you, you chose these people because they're impartial. They're fucking not. Yeah, but it's Ace Attorney. What are you fucking expecting? You know, I wish I could argue with that. Oh, thank you, sir. You're too kind, sir. Here's a penny. <laughs> Can I please have another blanket, sir? No. Uh, this is too unkind, sir. Which now means that five jurors agree to condemn this man. Oh, are we all voting black? Let me get on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote white solely off of principle. I just like to go against the grain. <laughs> Madam juror number six. Yes, dear. What can I do for you? Just go ahead and just go ahead and vote guilty. Just do it. You have heard the testimonies of the witnesses in the stand. Oh, yes. I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know. Shut up, you old bat. Oh. <laughs> then, pray tell, why are you yet to pronounce your leaning? I'm bored. Well, dear, the thing is, I am a creature of habit, me. 
I always go to the park at around this time of day and sit at a, sit on a nice bench and get on with my knitting. What a useless hobby. <laughs> <laughs> throws a knife into her face. Throws, no, she throws a knitting needle at him. Oh. <laughs> into his heart and he like bursts into flames. She's like, I knew it! There's a lovely little park just near where I live. McGilded Park, it's called. <laughs> oh shit, there's one on our side. The gentleman donated it to the city. You know, to put a smile on Londoners' faces, he said. I can't imagine such a fine young, ge not young, no. gentleman. <laughs> Wait, how old is he? We can check the court record, can't yeah, we? Yeah, I can. Give me a second. How old is this man? No, not young. Not young. <laughs> I mean, I guess in comparison to her... But I, like, I don't have her profile, I'm sorry. No, they're just a juror. But, like, looking at her, if Beppo is 68, that woman is ancient. I also <laughs> love Beppo's name because it seems like they just sort of ran out of, like, any sort of inspiration. They're like, fuck it, his name's Beppo. <laughs> Beppo! <laughs> Beppo! A gentleman would have, uh, would have it in him to take another man's life. Uh, uh, he's always doing wonderful things for the city. That's right. A man like that wouldn't stab someone, surely. Mother, can we go to Miss? Can we go to the McGilded Park Library, uh, public library later, and borrow some more books? No, Timmy. We can't afford books. Also, you can't read. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many Londoners live with their heads in the clouds? Do you people not know what kind of a man Magnus McGilded really is? What kind of a man he is? No, what uh, kind of a man is he? <laughs> the philanthropist Magnus McGilded has enough wealth to purchase the entire city he claims to so to highly to value so highly. Yay, I'm not i I'm not the only one fucking up. But where did all that wealth come from? Your client is a Shylock, sir, and one with very darkest of souls. What? <laughs> What does that mean? Stone the crows. McGilded lends money at extortionate rates of interest, so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When they default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've, I've never heard any mention of that before. Are you allowed to do this? <laughs> Don't worry. You can't prove if I'm making it up on the spot. Your, facul your faculties haven't deserted you, I'm sure, madam. So has this thought not crossed your mind? Would a man wealthy enough to buy London in its entirety not have a carriage of his own? What possible reason could this man have had to make use of a public omnibus service? Um... You're not saying that... Oh, I am saying... The victim, a poor brickmaker, had next to nothing to his name, save considerable financial liability. It will come as no surprise that his creditor was the accused Magnus McGilded. But let it also be known that the very day Mr. Mason was killed was the final repayment day for his debts. Good gracious! Oh, shit! The brickmaker was destitute. He had long lost his house. He had not a shilling with which to repay his debts. And in the end, this pitiful soul has the very last thing he owed taken from him. His life. By the merciless... merciless <laughs> by the merciless philanthropist pretender, Magnus McGilded. I don't believe it. I do. If I might add something briefly. Silence, woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Susato. You claim that the victim had been lent money by Mr. McGilded. But where is your evidence to support that to support your claim? My evidence is that I made it the fuck up. God, I wish that was a real line. Look at this fucker. Oh god, he has wine. Oh god, no. Don't you dare take a dramatic sip. Don't you fucking do it. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hallowed chalice in a court of law. Aha, there it is. 
There he goes. <laughs> Lord Van Zeek's hollowed chalice. How can this be considered acceptable? There's a guy juggling a knife on the jury, and three of the people here are clearly biased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I find myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from the Far East could show great courage, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. You think I have great courage? A woman should know her place. Oh. <laughs> As a judicial assistant. Just like assistant, throws the wine glass at her. <laughs> throws the whole <laughs> bottle at her. As judicial assistant to the defense, I am simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. Like these veins. <laughs> <laughs> this is the debtor's ledger, which details all monies loaned by the accused. You will find the victim's name clearly recorded inside. Hey, can you give that to me so I can look at it? No. Oh. Finders keepers, loser. Allow me to present this ledger as evidence. Oh, yay, thank you. This is baby's blood. <laughs> and pray forgive the discourtesy of raising my chalice and a toast to the enigmatic East at all at the same time. Cool. Does anyone have a lozenge? <laughs> a marvelous toast, Council. I will gladly accept this new evidence. Can, I fucking hate the judges. Uh, can we examine that? Yeah, we can. Just give me a second. Give me a second. Oh, yes. 20 guineas. The victim owed a considerable sum. I don't know how much a guinea is, dumbass. This portfolio must contain all sorts of secrets of the London's gentry. Oh dear, do you really think we ought to look in we ought to look inside? It's evidence. Literally we have to. Well it's not as though we know any of London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps. I swear to god, if fucking Sholmes is in here. <laughs> Actually, I wonder. I assure you, I assure you will not find Mr. Sholm's name inside. I doubt that. Press Y to doubt. Well, let's see what we find. Ooh, fancy. Okay, I can see. so read that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. Whoever wrote this was a chicken. Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? That's sexist to assume. Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? After all, not everyone in this country is well off. Goodness! What is it? <clears throat> Look at this! Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Hey, 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 hey. I'm so glad. Did you figure something out? Nah, I just knew he was evil. <laughs> I Early. knew this fucker was evil. God, earlier you were telling me, like, I don't think the murderer has been introduced. I swear to God, if it is Bruce. <laughs> I don't think it is, because normally they don't introduce the killer right off the bat. Should that <laughs> name mean something to me? It it does sound strangely familiar, actually, Rian I'm going to punch you. Buddy. Bruce Fairplay, the, the witness testifying at this very moment. Oh, yes, of course, the banker. Why is his name in here? Ah, he borrowed 20 guinea, did he? Oh, God. How much is 20 guinea? Are you going to giggle it right now? Maybe. Here, I'll take over. Yeah, you take over. And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course, but this could be very useful information. Very useful. Okay, cool. Yes, okay. Now we have, we fucking know that the clearly evil guy is clearly evil. Hang on, are these all different things or is this all the same thing? Cram full of gentlemen's names. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is all just the same thing. Okay, uh, okay, yes. And the accused made quite certain he had ample recompense. Ah, shit. I prefer it, uh, well, it would seem I've, I've had the wool pulled over my eyes. Regrettably, madam, that is the modus operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little park, too. What a scoundrel. Wait, no. Wait, no. Still. May it all be for the best. Uh, wait a minute. Let's think about this a little bit more before. 
I don't stand for nonsense. Well. We lose, Cody. Damn it. Are you ready to start this trial over? Wait, do we fucking really have to start over? Well, we lost, didn't we? No, because there's going to be some bullshit twist. <laughs> that was it. The last juror's decision. Uh, in... Can, can you just tell me? Hang on, Susato's doing her fucking thing. According to this encyclopedia of British law, when all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty... One guinea... Sorry. One guinea was worth like a pound and five cents. Or five... I don't know. Okay, how much is that in actual money? Well... <laughs> <laughs> how much is that in non-monopoly money? Court proceedings are suspended and the presiding judge will deliver his final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. Wait, that means that the McGilda was about to pay them like a thousand pounds. Damn. <laughs> That's how much I weigh. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you goddamn idiot. The final verdict. It's over then. Oh. There you go. I slapped my book. There's a footnote, though. A footnote? How can a book have feet? I know it has a spine. All six members of the jury are now in agreement in the case. He knocks over the wine bottle. <laughs> yeah, I was going to make that joke too. Allow me to convey my respect for your swift and righteous decision. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial. By delivering my final verdict, I trust there are no objections. I have an objection. You're stupid. Mr. Sato, just tell me one thing. Oh, yes? One second, I'm thirsty. You were in the middle of saying something before. The footnote in your encyclopedia of British law. However, the defense... What did it say next? Sorry, like, doing fucking not Edgeworth's voice. Really hell on my throat. Oh, uh, yes, of course. One moment. Yeah, we got all the time in the world. When all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended, and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. Uh, then the footnote says, however, the defense has the right to demand a uh, summation examination. Right? Yeah, you had that right. <laughs> of jurors at this point. A summation examination objection. British objections a summation examination quite the word <laughs> from which century has the tomb you have there been resurrected <laughs> judging from the binding I would say that book is at least 50 years old oh really any modern texts on British law wouldn't even give such an antiquated procedure a mention or antiquated whatever it's a relic Long forgotten, and certainly no longer practiced. So you're out of luck. Oh. Well, we're fucked. Crazy. You good? Nope. What even is it, Mitsusato? This so-called summation examination. Oh, um, one moment. I'll read about it. I like how the pages are not turning the direction she moves the, her fingers. You would demand the right to a procedure before you even understand what it entails. Yeah. <laughs> Typical Nipponese. All right. Oh, God, fucking... that's just straight up racism. God, we're just getting back into racism, <laughs> huh? It's all full circle. It's all racism from here. <laughs> <laughs> we all racist down here. <laughs> all right, Mr. Narahoto, I think I understand. It seems that under this procedure, we are able to appeal. We are able to appeal to the members of the jury. That's not going to work. To do what exactly? Appeal to them to change their leaning and reverse their decision. And it says here that if successful, the proceedings of the trial must be resumed. Make them reverse their decisions. Yes, in times gone by, barristers would use a summation examination to attempt to influence the jury's decision. But that procedure became something of a formality with no practical benefit, really. So it rather fell out of use. I 
wonder why. Probably because this is a cartoon world. Everyone's stupid. Because it was devoid of purpose. Changing just one member of the Jenny's mind would be hard enough, let alone several. No self-respecting defense barrister would even assert his right to try in this day and age. Still... It's a fucking stupid cartoon world. I don't see any mention of the procedure actually being formally revoked. <laughs> that's you, that's what you sound like. <laughs> what are you suggesting? <laughs> he, he, he runs over and he like dumps the wine bottle on her and then just breaks the glass over her head. <laughs> Lunches at her and sucks out her blood and is like, okay, cool. Anybody else going to drag this out? I'm going to go home. <laughs> it's nearly dawn. I read that. No, you did. I'm suggesting that al although it may be... Uh, antiquated. Antiquated and largely forgotten, it isn't yet extinct. Okay, so's opium. What's your point? What? No. No, how do you know about that? <laughs> we just escaped. <laughs> now, dude, opium was, like, super popular in Britain. That whole ass... <laughs> People would take their kids to opium dens because it was the only best way to get them to sleep for the night. Just have your kid high as a fucking kite. What do you think, Mr. Narahoto? Do you want to go to an opium den? <laughs> <laughs> Could really go for some of that sweet, sweet opium. A summation examination. Our last possible option. Do we assert our right to carry it out or admit defeat? Assert our right because I refuse to forget it. Let's do it! Daddy! Okay, don't do that again. <laughs> All the people telling me to not do that again. <laughs> the, defense, the defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination, my lord. Objection! I don't think you're allowed to object to that. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that based on nothing. London is the capital city of the most powerful nation on earth. We have a duty to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of judicial procedure. And I have every right to do this thing you haven't, like, you know, revoked. <laughs> yeah. And, like, what argument are you about to make here? Other than you just uh, feel like being an issue. Summation examinations are an embarrassment that should remain buried. Well, too bad. You should have done the formal paperwork. Yeah, too bad you suck. Punk ass. But it's our right. Uh, uh, it's our right. But if I it's our right, it's our right. Bet. I believe it could prove vital in this trial. Well, I have a young virgin waiting at home and her blood isn't going to drain itself. She's just like laying there chained up and it's like, uh, <laughs> it's coming back. Or? Like hanging upside down. It's like starting to get woozy. Whew. That head's spinning. <laughs> like, Do you have any idea if she gets too ripe, it's like an apple? The defense's petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the summation examination. Oh, okay. Let me get up. <laughs> this is madness. No, this is Sparta. <laughs> I get it. I get the joke. I'm gonna kick you down a well. <laughs> which, by Just the like way, that's oh. <laughs> which, by the way, that's what that hole is in the movie. If anyone's wondering, it's a fucking well. Yeah, contaminate everyone's water. <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. Foreman, are you in the remainder of the jury ready? <laughs> well, uh, I'm not. Uh... There was no mention of this in the letter I received. You see. Uh, I thought you were going to read the so, but you didn't. Oh, sorry, I was on doubt. All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached the decision. Is it all going to be bullshit and nonsense? <laughs> on what grounds? You must all justify your decisions and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. You know, this seems really important. I wonder why it was like... Man, uh... it's crazy how they were all bribed. Well, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. This is most irregular. Not, uh, no mention was made of this before. I can't wait to find out that they're all, like, either being blackmailed or, like, they're all also on the list. I don't really hold with all this justifying lock. No one needs justification for their decisions. Not when you're white and privileged. This seems to have thrown the jurors off. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this shit's wild. 
it seems none of them have experienced this before. I mean, most people, like, don't go to jury duty very often. All right, then. The summation examination. Thank God we didn't get anything from the last two people. A defense procedure no practicing lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for to turn this trial around. Sorry that I'm, like, fidgeting around. My brain keeps telling me that the timer isn't going, but it's, like, it's right there. <laughs> So be it then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant, Magnus McGilded, guilty of this most serious crime. Okay, I've heard the best way to start this is to, like, find the most ridiculous statement and just work from there. Uh, it's Ace Attorney. How do you pick just one? Oh, God, a stupid flower. There was no one else inside the car at the time, so it have it has to have been him. I trust the driver. He has an excellent memory, it seems. Four passengers, the with fares to with fares totaling twenty pence. When did he mention that? Maybe it was something Okay! Like, like really? Really? We're let we're really? Really? I <sighs> See remember, Cody, Caesar lived. <laughs> I really want there to be a guy who's just like brings in a musket and his character animation is just him reloading it. Uh, oh, come on! <laughs> oh my god. It's not a musket, it's a pistol. <sighs> Shoot, was there a musket? Anyway, read his line. <laughs> Stuck the chap next to him like, just like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. I, I simply typed in... Uh, co collated. collated. Uh, I simply typed and collated all the statements made thus far and drawn the logical conclusion. I'm so drunk I can't see. I just pressed a button. <laughs> you can trust the guild. Fairs, fairs is our motto. We haven't raised prices above four pence for years. Wait. The scoundrel stabbing that poor man on the floor. The, it's it be, uh, beggar's belief. It's beggar's belief. Wait. Okay. So there's two. Like. Okay. You can that, get the math doesn't math on this one, right? Yeah. No, it doesn't math. Four passengers totaling twenty pence, but he says that they haven't raised it above four pence. So. There has to have been another passenger. Yeah? Unless Beppo also has to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having to pay to sit at your position at work. I absolutely think someone's going to try and do that at some point. Well, no one's going to take it because you don't go to work to pay for work. I, I don't know, man. Some people are desperate. Some of the jurors like, don't seem to uh, to have wonder... Uh, some of the jurors don't seem to have wonder wonderfully formed arguments, though, do they? Because, like, Amazon hates its employees so much, I think if it could go automated, it wouldn't, just because it loves to torture people that much. Well, let's see what we can do. We need to get these six people to change their minds. You know what? That might be the reason we don't have drones yet. Yeah, no, they just love torturing people that much that they, like, they can't even be bothered. I have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive language. Okay, anyone who thinks he's guilty is gay. Just a moment, Mr. Narahoto. If you come out with that gay line, I will slap you. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early for that kind of power move. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Oh my god, Morinane. Bullshit. Oh? I thought I was going to have to thaw their icy minds with some heartwarming rhetoric about the defendant. Unfortunately... You have to use facts and logic. Once the jurors have decided the defendant is guilty, they're likely to heed anything the defense says. But, but then... They've reached their conclusions by their own reasoning, you see. Your pleas will sound like excuses. In fact, it, it could recoil on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entranced... Entrenched. Entrenched they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Don't yell at me! What the hell, bitch? Oh dear, I'm just citing what I've read, in, read about British law, Mr. Narahoto. Right, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea how to make this work, then? Let me pull back the book out and get on the same page. 
well, from what I can understand, the key is the key to this procedure is using the juror's own words to make your argument. Oh, uh, this is how we use the that one guy's thing against that other. Yeah, okay. What do you mean? Actually, there's two. You should have noticed it, but it's okay really? if you didn't. Oh, was it when she said he was on the floor? <laughs> the old lady said he was like on the floor. Yeah. Hang on, I'm, I gotta I gotta get up for a second. Oh, okay. Well, Cody's back now. <laughs> you missed the panning shot because he wanted a chocolate bar. <laughs> Just play elevator music over it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, the six members of the jury are randomly selected members of the public. They may appear to... Present. They may appear to present a, a united front, but the truth is... Most of them are biased. They are complete strangers who just happened to find themselves here in the courtroom together. I doubt that. And that... <laughs> and that's the way to break them down, you mean? And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it? Yes, exactly. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we must listen very carefully to e to what each member of the jury says and see if we can identify any contradictory statements. If we can... We may contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. Is the banker the murderer? <laughs> I see. So it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. Just so the player understands. In a way, then, this is similar to a regular cross-examination. But with six uh, fucking people. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. Find contradictions in their statements and pit the jurors against one another to break them down. Crush them like ants beneath my feet. All right, I may be able to pull this off. <laughs> no, that's not right. You did that twice. I have to pull this off. Fucking not edge work is over there. Like, why are you hitting yourself? Are you stupid? Classic Nipponese move. All right. <laughs> Can we start proceedings, counsel? I would ask you to take the stand for this. I'm expecting a clear and concise rebuttal. Yes, my lord. He has the daddy. Don't do that. <laughs> Jury examination. Kill them. All right, cool, 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 cool. Um, let's see. So it was... Uh... You gotta pit this against the other guy's thing? Or backwards? Yeah. Objection, you're stupid. These two statements clearly contradict each other. They do. Explain yourself, counsel. In the, oh dear, what have I said? I swear on Silver Blazer's main and name, I haven't the first idea what you're talking about. According to the group. Oh, this is like a whole cutscene. Yeah, according to the group's testimony we heard so far. He just keeps walking. <laughs> there were four <laughs> passengers on the omnibus at, on the night of, in question. And according to the coachman, Mr. Beppo, he took 20 pence as fares. Or in fares. Quite right. I have the, those precise details typed neatly here in front of me. I just like to imagine that one dude is juggling the exact same kind of knife that was used in the murder. <laughs> he's doing the fucking thing where he's like juggling the murder weapon. It's like, oh, they'll never guess it's me. <laughs> and juror number five t also told us the following. The fare for the omnibus is always four pence. That is a fair and convenient single price. Just the way London's carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. We Japanese are well known for our math skills. In fact, it leaves a glaring deception in the facts. Discrepancy. Whatever. Why, man, why? I don't know. Do the math yourself. Oh, wait, you probably can't. <laughs> yeah, he's too drunk. <laughs> One eye is going to look at four, and the other eye is going to be looking four or five. <laughs> four passengers paying four pence each if you do the multiplication. Huh. It would be 16 pence. Exactly. As I said, it doesn't add up. The, the, figure, the figures are different. Fours and fives are different numbers, you see. <laughs> By four pence, in fact. Or precisely, one person's fare. One person's fare. Yes. In other words, on the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible there was another passenger we've heard nothing about. 
I mean, along with the fact that they keep saying he was on the floor when the picture clearly shows that he's sitting. This, this can't be right. The coachman of the guild, a good honest man. One and all, trustworthiness is our watchword. Well, I mean, maybe all the rest of them are, but you might want to ask Beppo some questions. Yeah, this, this man who's dying of hypothermia. Oh, he did say it was 20 pence when he said that he goes to the pub and that's like all gone there. Oh, right, right, right. The figures, uh, the, the figures your coachman claims most certainly do not add up. Your watchword, your watchword, good sir, is a fallacy. I beg your pardon? Don't yell at me, I'm just typing shit. <laughs> that's my character, you see. Mr. Guildmaster. I think you ought to consider that if this trial were to end now, the news will surely spread all over London. The news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he that he let nefarious characters ride his omnibus. He's Jack the Ripper. <laughs> like a clearly evil man just gets on the <laughs> omnibus. I can't wait for when Jack the Ripper is the murderer. I can't wait for the stand user to get on the omnibus. <laughs> <laughs> all right then. How do I make it so this miserable trial doesn't end, hmm? I, dude, it's... Okay, see, that time it's lined up. <laughs> I reversed my book this time. <laughs> I'm reading it the right way now. Well, according to my book here... You simply launch a ball of fire into the innocent side of the set of scales. Now hold your horses there, coachman. No. We were all in agreement. Why do you have to go and... Wait till I get my hands on you, Beppo. You'll wish you were a clown again. He jumps up on the stand, starts firebending, and jumps at Beppo. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into an avatar fight. <laughs> oh, this is all very irritating. I'm begging your pardon, sir. I'm going to do the same. Conflict. Of interest. <laughs> <laughs> but I love a Mike, not you as well. I don't know, Mike. A penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear, after all. If you throw it in someone's hand, they smile. If you throw it in their eye, they cry. <laughs> Narahoda's like, oh, yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> First hand. I certainly can't put my trust in someone who doesn't follow my exact standards of financial matters. Lame. Oh, Shut up, really? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, for one, think it's only proper that we hear from the witness again. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. You did it. Uh, if you can manage to change two more ju uh, jurors' minds, we can force the trial to continue. Yay, the charade can continue. Woohoo! <laughs> two more, actually. There is something else that's bothering me about a couple of their assertions. Then, then that's where you must strike next. So I need to pit two more jurors against each other and show there's another contradiction in their assertions. Exactly. I read oh. your thoughts. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah, she can just read our mind, I guess. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, the scales have shifted, but they still weigh heavily on the side of guilt. Not for long. <laughs> Counsel, you have the floor again. Continue with your summation examination. I'm guessing now we have to pit the dude in the fucker chain fucking... I'm changing my leaning to innocence. I should like to hear what the... Slipshod. Slipshod bookkeeper has to say for himself. Yeah, it's like this guy. Against the granny! <laughs> You're going down, grandma! These two statements are completely contradictory. He drops it into his leg. Oh my god, like fucking Nosa. <laughs> yeah, and he's just like... <laughs> anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> what? Explain, Council Post Haste. Oh, dearie me. I, I was only knitting a jumper for my other half. Your other half is tiny. It stretches. <laughs> what is this claptrap? What does contradictory even mean, I ask you? Uh, we've heard from more than one witness that they allegedly saw the actual moment from uh, when the defendant stabbed the victim. Now, out of curiosity, juror number three. What? Can't you see that I'm busy here? 
Dude, it's not that deep in the wood. Uh, how would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? Uh, what sort of motion was it? Oh, want to test me, do you? He throws the knife at us and just misses. <laughs> it was like this. Stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. Just like the prim banker said. Yes, that was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Oh, uh, give me a second. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh... Testing. <laughs> How do you feel about what's going on so far? This is absolute nonsense for padding. <laughs> That's like, fun, Jesus, man. Jesus, I thought the first game had padding. They were like, you know, the first game is too straightforward. <laughs> now then, juror number six. Gotta make this shit as convoluted as possible. Oh, is that me, is it? What can I do for you, young man? I only recently learned how to count. How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, my... Well, dear, as far as I understand it... Like this! And she throws the knitting needle into us. <laughs> it was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. Now don't move! <laughs> <laughs> Red light! Take a look at these two jurors. Struck the fellow next to him without even getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. Well, I never... They're... They're stabbing in totally different directions. Someone's going on the naughty list. Ah, oh, damn. What? Bless my stitches, what a muddle. Uh, what, what's this tell us? <laughs> no, what this tells us. Yeah, <laughs> Is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. Oh, but why? Why the dickens would they lie? Because Beppo is a bitch. <laughs> yeah, look at that punk ass. I don't know that yet. I don't know? What makes you think I know? But what I do know is that if the trial ends at this point, we may never find out. And we may never know the real truth. Are you really going to change that guy's opinion, though? He, he voted based on the principle that he hates rich people. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, <laughs> can you really let that happen in all good in all good conscience? Sure. <laughs> Lies, you say. Oh, dearie me. I'll have to kill them for I, it. I can't abide people telling lies. That was a very slow fire. Well, I'm very old. <laughs> the scales. I don't believe it. Why don't you believe it? Are they supposed to be even? They were not even earlier. They are even now. They were not even a second ago. <laughs> Wait! Now hear this, my fellow jurors. I warn you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in his black suit. He's, he's clearly some kind of devious eastern sorcerer using magic on us all. I could use magic. Do you really think I'd be putting <clears throat> myself through all this? Answer me this, Doc Jinx. Don't call me that. Huh? Me? See, that's a recalled Pokemon card. What exactly is a problem? What if... What, what of it if two witnesses have slightly different recollections of events? What of it? Let's say the Shylock, sta the Shylock did stab the victim as he was sat next to him on the omnibus. And this young dandy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor. And then the Shylock stabbed him again. Oh, I can't wait to throw the autopsy report at you. <laughs> and this old lady saw him do it. Well, what's to say it didn't happen like that, hmm? Who are you calling a dandy, sir? Why, I should take this knife to you. If I could get it out of this fucking room. Who are you calling old? <laughs> Why, I should take this needle to you. Yeah, see, that's a bigger threat. Uh, they're ready to kill each other now. I got this. But could the foreman of the jury be right? Did the two witnesses see two different... Yeah, did the two witnesses see two different moments of, of the same crime? No. It's out of the question. You're stupid. You're fucking stupid. Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Hey. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it, you dog jinx? Come on out with it. Okay, you're gonna have to stop calling me that. <laughs> What you're suggesting is it's impossible. It's out of the question. 
Surprised face. From all the women. <laughs> oh, you hit the thing. I know, I've ruined the whole recording. Yeah, we gotta trash it now. Damn it. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? How can you possibly say that? You, you do realize I'm, I'm only doing my job. As foreman of the jury, I have a responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. So where's your evidence, man? That's what I want. That's what we want to see. I say the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. You say that's out of the question. Show me some proof. You know, it's really funny how like they saw two different moments of the crime, but that implies that one of them looked away. And I don't think anyone would look away from someone actively getting murdered. Yeah, I think you just kind of sit there and be like, oh, well, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do say that's bloody unpolite of you. A bloody rude. God, imagine Lady, <laughs> Lady First, <coughs> like he sees it and he's like, holy shit, and he jumps down through the skylight <laughs> to get him. <laughs> just absolutely ready to run hands. I mean, he might be. He might be an absolute gentleman. He might just be an absolute giga chad. <laughs> I doubt it because of his stupid hat, but still. Stupid hat. <laughs> it looks like the only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with, with something he can't dismiss. I'll give you five dollars. <laughs> Some so, irrefutable hard evidence. Sorry, there was something in my eye. As you wish. What? <laughs> what wait, wait, hang on. <laughs> hang on, no. No! <laughs> you activated my trap card. <laughs> it's like an anime trap. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'll give you proof. I'll give you some proof. I'll give so you some the question that the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. Autopsy uh, report. Yeah, but, uh, hang on. Uh, single stab, yeah. Yeah. Take that, you rapscallion. <laughs> Just go up and daintily slap him on the face. This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, Mr. Mason was stabbed in the abdomen. Only once. Duh. Only once. It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely one time. Which means these witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. <laughs> oh, he got it out. <laughs> No, he didn't. <laughs> All right, I concede defeat. I don't care about my morals anymore. <laughs> Fuck your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Wait, that... That means... Four jurors are now leaning to not guilty. This charade can continue. We've done it, Mr. Narahoto. We won! I hope you're ready for another three hours of inane bullshit. <laughs> what are you playing at, you dandy fool? Oh, shut up. <laughs> you wanker. Oh, shit. <laughs> shut your trap, sir. No one deceives me. But we had a consensus. I said shut your trap. I know a liar when I see one. And if the chap ever dares to cross the threshold of my shop, I'll take this razor sharp blade and shave every last hair off his head. Oh, you're a barber. Uh, yeah. I don't with think this, I would trust you. <laughs> with this poisoned blade. Wait. I shouldn't have licked it. <laughs> and then he just falls over. Please tell me he's a barber. Oh, my God. Well, in a quite remarkable turn of events, the defense's summation examination has flipped the balance of the scales of justice. Now he must do battle with the goddess of law. But I'm dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> Accordingly, there is no longer a large enough majority among the jury for me to educate. And the trial must continue. Yes. <laughs> yes. Four more hours of inane bullshit. Oh, yeah, I'm getting paid for this. I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witness to return to their places. Okay. One second. <clears throat> and I call upon all of you to continue to pursue the truth. My beard is cotton candy. Since we're in Europe, it's called Daddy's Beard. <sighs> or Fairy Floss, depending on which part we're in. Both are considerably worse than cotton candy. <laughs> so, Lord Van Zeeks, continue to sub 
substantiate the case for the prosecution, if you please. I don't want to. <laughs> I have more blood to drink. God, I'm just <clears throat> waiting for him to do the thing. To, like, smash it in his hand? No, wait. Or throw wait, it in wait. somebody's face? <laughs> he just throws it over his shoulder. Oh. That wasn't Damn. the thing I wanted him to do, but, like, that's one thing he can do. Having savored the rich aroma of the carmine contents of this hallowed chalice. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was a mistake! It may seem crass to crush it to dust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Then why'd you do it? <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks! That's the Fair. one rule in this courtroom. No smashing glass. It's a safety hazard. Is it cold in here or is it just me? <laughs> is it hot in here or am I just gay? <laughs> As your antiquated tome no doubt says, the prosecution may not speak during a summation examination. So I honored a deathly silence and listened to the charade. Don't call it that. It seems I overestimated the intelligence of the jury. That seems kind of insulting, but okay. Well, no matter. There is nothing so hard to prove as a self-evident truth, it would seem. No, and why else would we grace the courtroom with our presence, after all? Oh, we're zooming! Oh. So, let us proceed to the next round of battle. Oh shit, he took off his jacket. His cape. Whatever. Bring forth the witnesses once more. I don't think they ever left. They were kind of in the background. Yeah, they were like five feet away, dude. Quit yelling at the bailiff. Oh, Beppo's dead. Beppo, you got, <laughs> some, you got some splaining doo doo. <laughs> witnesses. I trust you heard the submission examination we just had to endure. I mean, you were five feet away. Oh, yes, sir. I did, sir. Of course I heard it. Uh, yes, sir, I heard it. You, sir, on the end. The coachman. I believe it's Beppo. No, it's Beppo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, my lord, sir. If it transpires that in your previous testimony, you were attempting to veil the presence of a fifth passenger on your omnibus. Man, what is with these cases and hiding people? Seriously, the first case, they wanted to hide the identity of Giselle Brett. The second one, they were trying to hide the identity of the ballerina. Now we're hiding the identity of the fifth. <laughs> you will be found guilty of, perjur of perjury. Perjury. <laughs> and you are advised to bear that in mind, sir. Uh, oh, mio Dio. Uh. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> now then, witnesses. I hereby call on you to testify before the court again. We'll explain the various misgivings, 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 misgivings brought to our attention by the defense's summation examination. Man, we like that word. Almost as much as, much as we like that animation we used in the last fucking case. Hey, Bruce, you speak first. <laughs> you go first this time. Oh, damn it. I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it. But, um... Well, I, for one, was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. Are you telling me I paid 20 cents more? <laughs> <laughs> he fiddled us on the fare, he did. And then I saw that blood-curling sight as well. It was It's all too much. I tell you, I saw McGilded stabbing that man. Everything I said before stands. Oh, yes, yes, he s stabbed him. Yes, he did. I think so, yes. Oh, why did you say you think so? Oh, wow, well, would you look at that? Oh, wow, blah, blah, did you blah, blah, lie blah. about seeing it? Counsel, make sense of this for me, please. I can't be bothered to do so. The phantom fifth passenger conjured into existence by my learned Eastern friend never existed. Aww. Boy, I hope our descendants aren't crazy gay for each other. <laughs> the confusion has arisen from the coachman's sly little cousin. Cousinage. Uh -huh. Beppo, explain yourself. I don't want to. Oh, he has eyes. Cool. Yeah, they've been frozen shut this whole time. I'm terribly sorry, Guildmaster. The guild's fare is four pence across the board. You know that. 
Am I to understand that you've been overcharging our passengers, passengers by a penny affair? It's so cold, and the last run of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, coachman. I and sentence the... you to death. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the guillotine. I'm sorry. Yeah, do they still behead people? The French do. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking crazy, huh? You're a disgrace, Beppo. A disgrace! I know. And your selfish actions have brought dishonor on the entire guild. If I may, sir. I had to pay t uh, ten pence on the bus just last week. Shut up. Why? Four passengers at five pence each is, yes, twenty pence. Is McGilda going to speak up? I've done the <laughs> I've done the arithmetic ten times already, but I just can't make the results come out differently. Damn crazy. No, that figures. Well, it would appear that one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, counsel for the defense, your cross-examination, if you please. We've already had the pleasure of a projected summation examination today. I see you intend to continue the parlor games. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I love charades. Absolutely. And Pictionary. Fuck. Do you want to call it here, or do you want to do you uh, want to do the cross examination? There's like four minutes left. Do you want to like try to get a statement or? No. Because okay. it's gonna take like another ten minutes to get it all done. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, that has been The Great Ace Attorney. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.